Today we're learning about whole numbers and their equivalent fractions. Let's start by looking at some cakes. And here at the top, we have one vanilla cake. We want to describe how many slices are there. Well, we could say the cake's been cut up into five slices, and we have all of those. So we have five-fifths of this cake. But if we head back to our table, let's take a look at the chocolate cakes. How many slices of chocolate cakes are there? Well, we could look and see we have two full cakes. The first cake, it's cut into five slices, and we have all of them. So that's five-fifths. Then this next cake, it's also five-fifths. But what is this in total? Well, we definitely have 10 total slices, so the numerator of our fraction will be a 10. But 10 what? Well, each piece of cake, it's still just one-fifth of a cake. And that doesn't change just because we've put more of them together. So we have 10 fifths of a chocolate cake. Now let's head back to the table of cakes one more time and let's take a look at these confetti cakes. We have three whole cakes, but let's write this as a fraction. Well, the first cake is 5 fifths, the second cake is 5 fifths, and the third cake is 5 fifths. In total, we definitely have 15 slices of cake, so our numerator will be 15. But if you think of each slice of cake, it's still just a fifth of a cake. So here, we have 15 fifths. You need to pay close attention to how you write fractions when you have multiple whole numbers. When you have two or three wholes, you have more total pieces, but the size of each piece isn't changing. Each of these pieces is still a fifth, and so our denominator, it stays as a five. Now let's look at one of these together. Let's take a look at these models and figure out how to label them using a fraction. Well first, let's pretend we were only looking at this first square. What fraction can describe this square? Well there's one, two, three shaded pieces out of a total of three. So this is the fraction three-thirds. Now each of the squares are the same, so we can go ahead and label each of these as three-thirds. But the question is, how could we label them all together? Well, how many shaded pieces are there all together in all of these models? Well, there's three, six, nine shaded pieces, and so nine will be our numerator. But nine over what? What should the denominator of our fraction be, and why? Well, this is the important part of the lesson. Each of these pieces, it's still just a third of a square. Just because we're looking at a whole bunch of them together doesn't change that. These are still thirds, so our denominator is 3, and our fraction, it's 9 thirds. Now let's look at another of these together. Let's label these models using a fraction. Well, to start, how many whole circles is this? There are five whole circles, but we're going to write this using a fraction. Well, first, count up the number of shaded pieces. How many shaded pieces are there in total? Well, there are 4, 8, 12, 16, 20 pieces in total. So the numerator of our fraction will be 20. But what should the denominator be? Well, each piece here, it's still one-fourth of a circle. And nothing changes just because we've put all of these together. We just have 20 of these fourths. 4 is our denominator. We would say 5 wholes is equal to 20 fourths. Now it's time for you to practice on your own. Label these models with a fraction. Well, there's six total shaded pieces in these models, so the numerator is six. Then if you think about each shaded piece, well, it's one half of the triangle, so these are all halves. We would say we have six halves. Now here's your last problem for this video. Label these models with a fraction. Well, you could count that we have eight shaded pieces in these models, so our numerator is eight. But if you look at each piece, it's one-fourth of the square. So these are all fourths, and we just have eight fourths. That's all for now. Great work. Now you know how to write whole numbers using fractions. Stay tuned for next time.